This is contortions, a grade nine contortions, um, number one. And I'm going to take up all your reduced bank questions. And it's basically, I'm going to take up exactly what you've got on your paper, except try to explain it a little bit so that you have some a little bit more of an understanding. Okay, let's look at your reduced bank. And the reduced bank is question one, two, three, six, nine, and 10. On the last video that I gave, I actually went through the hints for numbers 2, 9, and 10. And today I'm going to explain all of them um, so you get the answers. And then I will also explain 1, 3, and 6. OK, so let's go through the hints first, the ones I gave hints before. So question number 2. Again, question number 2 says the average of seven numbers is 3.5. So I've got the seven numbers is 3.5. When three more numbers are added, the value is 2.9. So we've got 2.9. Um, what is the average of the last three numbers? So um, basically, I wrote this out as a hint so that you got the idea of what's going on. But basically, if you said, OK, let's, what's the total for the first um, seven numbers and that first total for the first seven numbers is seven times 3.5 which is 24.5 and then you can find out what the total is for all 10 and that would be 2.9 which is the average because you know that that's given the question there is 10 questions so that would be 29 so basically what you want to do from there is you'll know that all right the difference would be right there so 29 minus 24.5 will give you 4.5. So that 4.5 is a total number of marks distributed over three of those last three tests. And so what is, um, what is the average? It's basically distribute that equally, and you've got it. So 4.5 divided by three, which is on your paper, and that gives you the 1.5, 1.5, and 1.5. So the average for the last three is 1.5. And that's visually for you to see what's going on there, and that would be the answer C. Okay, so for no question number nine, a series of 384 consecutive odd integers has a sum that is a perfect fourth power of a positive integer. Find the smallest possible sum for this series. Now, I, again, am going to go from what I had as um, my hint. So the number of integers added is 384. The sum of a series of any question, of any numbers, uh, consecutive numbers, is the number of integers times the average. So you know the number of integers is 384. And in my hint, I said two, two prime factors. So there's the prime factors, 2 to the 7th times 3. So basically, write 2 to the 7th times 3 underneath here. That's the number of integers. And now the average. Um, is because it's the smallest perfect fourth, you want to see, well, we have to multiply it by, let's just use a different color so you can see what I'm doing. So you multiply it by two, but because it has to be a multiple of four, the next multiple of four would be eight, so you need one more. And then you have to multiply by three, and this is only to the exponent one, so you need to add another three uh, onto that, which will give you the smallest um, pro um, multiple of four as the exponent, okay? So basically, this is your average right here. Two times uh, three cubed, three cubed is 27, times two is 54. So that's your average is 54. You multiply it by the number of integers and you get your sum, that's it. Okay, the key here was to know it's the smallest fourth power. If you wanted next smallest fourth power, well, this would be five and this would be seven and so on, and that would be another sum of a fourth power, but it wouldn't be the smallest one. So we want the smallest one, and that gives you the answer. Okay, now um, for question number 10, Richie's average on his math test was 64%. So we've got 64, 64. On the next test, he had a mark of 76%, and his, this raised his overall average to 67. So notice I've got an overall average of 67. When he wrote the next test after this, his average improved again by 1%. So plus 1, plus 1, plus 1. And that would give you a 68%, a 68%, a 68%, a 68%, and a 68 for the last one. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 at the end. Now, the reason why we had 3 here is um, I gave a couple of, in the hint, I said, well, there's a difference between 76 and 67. So basically, if this last mark was, six, like if we distributed everything across, you know you have 67 plus an extra nine marks, 
and those nine marks had to be distributed somewhere across here. And you knew that these, e each of these increased by three, so that's how we knew that there had to be three tests. Another way to think about it is it went up 64 to 76 is up 12 marks. And so therefore, this is the fourth, um, the fourth test, because if you divide that, then you can divide it by three and find out there's three tests before that. So basically, you've got four tests that went to 67%. It increased by one, so you have 68, 68, 68, 68. Um, what would he have had to get in the last one? Well, if the average, overall average is 68, you treat this like 68 plus the extra four that he would have needed, one, two, three, four. So 68 plus four is 72 percent, and that's what they should have had on their last test. Okay, so, um, so that's E for that answer. All right, now let's go back to number one, question number one. And question number one, says a variety of energy bar regularly sells for $1.35. But for one week, they were on sale for 95 cents. George purchased a dozen of these bars before, he be before the sale began and then bought three dozen more during the sale. What was the average price George paid per bar? So basically, in this situation, you want to know the total price. And so it's 12 at $1.35 and 36 at 95 cents. And then you want to find the, that gives you the total, and you want to find the average per bar, not per dozen. And that's where sometimes people made mistakes. And so there were 48 bars because there were one dozen plus three is four dozen, so 48 bars. And there's your answer. Okay. So for number two, um, or question number three, sorry. Question number three, on a shopping trip, Marge drove three kilometers at 60 kilometers per hour five kilometers at 120 kilometers per hour, and three kilometers at 40 kilometers per hour. Her average speed for the whole trip was. Okay, these questions for speed questions, they always cause problems for people because you have two, three different things that have happened here. She traveled at one speed for a certain amount of time, and then another speed for another amount of time, and another speed for another amount of time. So what do you do with that? Don't change everything. Just know it's always the total just like with the total marks over for marks, it would be the total marks over the number of tests that you took. In this case, it's the total, total, um, your, your total distance, and then you divide that by your total time because that is what speed is. Velocity is distance over time. And you can always remember that by, by thinking about the speed limit on, on the road. It's kilometers per hour. Kilometers, distance per hour. That's your speed. So that's your equation. Now. So the number of kilometers is very easily calculated because um, for that it says three kilometers and then five and then three. So that is 11 kilometers altogether. And then the total time, well you have to take your distance. And for the first one it says three kilometers and it says at 60 kilometers per hour. So that's why you divide it by 60 kilometers per hour. And that gives you the time for the first interval Time for the second interval was five kilometers at 120 kilometers an hour, and three kilometers at, 100, at 40 kilometers per hour, distance over velocity, okay? So that gives you your total time, and, um, and then you just calculate from there, all right? Number six. Now, I love number six for the end because I find it's the most interesting one. And, and this one, there's a big, long explanation that you're given. And I will, uh, I'll go through this explanation, then I'm going to show you a sort of a faster way to do this that I, I like personally myself. And, and this one um, is interesting because it relates back to the concept that was, I, I went, I took over and, and I took up in question number 10. Let's do what it says on the sheet first. On your paper it says, let n represent the number of tests preceding the last test. Okay, then x represent the previous average obtained by both students. If that happens, then you can say that if you have a number of tests at a certain average, and the last test is 97, then basically what you've calculated here is the total of all the tests, because you have the number of tests times the average to begin with before this last test, and this last test and mark is there. So that gives you your total marks. And then you divide it by the number of tests that they had. And there was this number of tests plus an extra one. And we don't know what that number is, so that's why we just say plus an extra one for that 97. And that equals 90% because that's what it gave at the end. So basically the key here is learning how to write out the algebraic equation. 
So when you do that, then you, can, um, you could solve a little bit and you get nx minus 90n equals negative 7. Okay, so you've got one equation, and that gives you your first equation. So then you say, okay, that was the first situation. Here's the second situation. The other person had so many tests, the same number, that's why we use the same n, and, um, or, and an average, so x represents the average, so whatever that average was for this next person, plus 73, because that was the last test. This gives the total for all his tests, and then you have n plus 1, which gives the total number, uh, and that gives the 87% average. Again, you simplify so that you have um, equation number 2. Then what you do is you solve for the equation. So you equation number one, equation number two, you subtract, and you're solving a system of equations, and you find n is equal to seven. Nice solution, all right? And this is great. It's a great way to solve it using algebra. Now let's think about the concept of what's really happened here, and this is kind of cool, because when I was going through this, I thought, well, rather than answering it this way, let's think about what really happened. You have a number of tests. You don't know how many at this point, but the, you have this average, plus you've got 97%. Now, this is for the first situation, and it says um, in question six, Peter and Diane had the same average in mathematics, so we know they have the same average. On the next test, Diana sc Diane scored 97%, and her average improved to 90%. So basically, to begin, like, she's got an average of 90 all around here, okay? And now for her to improve to 97%, it means that she would have had to have an extra 7% added on to all these other, like, because it, it only went up to 90%. It didn't go up to 97, it only went up to 90. So just like when we were talking about Question number 10, what happened here? And what you have to think is, okay, went up to 90. She had 97. So in other words, that last test, if we took the average of all of them, you know whoops, that the average is 90. So if you had 90 in all of them, and these all had to have 90 as well, but she had a 97%. That means there's an extra seven that she had to add on from here, which means that there had to be seven tests. Because seven is a prime number and you can't divide it and say, well, it could have been like if it was 14, if that number was 14, you wouldn't know how many tests there were. But because it was seven, that's a prime number, you cannot divide that by anything else. So there must have been seven tests for her to have to include. And that's the same answer as here. And you can double check with, what's his name, Peter? And um, his in, uh, increased or decreased by um, 14 percent. And when you actually use the same idea, well, that's seven tests decrease two each, and you've got the answer. Okay. So you can think of these many different ways. This was one way. There's another. And I'm sure for any of these answers, you may come up with something really unique and very good that could actually be used and show your teacher because this could be something that you could even include for Spirit of Math for the future for other students. Thanks.